everybody. Uh, may I have your attention, please? Um, my name is Brendan, for those of you that don't know me. Um, I am one of the technicians here at Ski Richmond. And I will be showing you about um, all the mysteries, you know, dispelling all the rumors and things that have to do with the CVT transmission. Um, uh, pretty much I'm just going to take it all apart, show you all the different components, um, show you what you should be looking out for, um, you know, from very first things you should be looking at when you take the transmission cover off to individual components on the clutch and the variator as well. Um, so, with that being said, the tools you need for this are very, uh, for most bikes, um, pretty uh, standard. For the transmission cover bolts, you just need an 8 millimeter ratchet um, of some type. The scooter that we're using is uh, the shop's Franken bike. Um, this is the guinea pig here. Uh, it's a Buddy 125 with a Buddy 150 engine in it. So, uh, in order to get this side cover off, um, on the Buddies it's just 8 bolts on the side. Um, the Rough House has 10 bolts. Um, the rough House and the Rattler, they're a little trickier because they have one bolt in the center. Just make sure that you, wanna, that you have all the bolts out before you start trying to pry side cover off. I mean, you don't want to do any damage. It is aluminum, so it's a soft metal. It can crack um, surprisingly easily. Um, so, nothing fancy about this. If you guys have any questions, feel when you feel torque to those ask. back up, when you put them back on, do you use a torque wrench or just do it by feel? Um, I would recommend using a torque wrench the first time you do, you know, first couple of times you do anything on a scooter or a motorcycle in particular. Because um, a lot of times the torque wrenches don't go down, aren't calibrated that well at it, you know, 10 and 11 pounds. Right, absolutely. Um, really, it is kind of tough because if you aren't um, more along the lines of a professional mechanic or anything, you don't really have access to tools that go to those smaller torque specs. Yeah. Um, basically the rule of thumb is um, not too tight. Like, especially in the aluminum cases, you want to snug it down. Um, there isn't much chance of them coming coming rattling loose, especially if you snug them. Uh, but you don't want to be cranking and cranking because you'll pull threads very easily. Um, especially since a lot of times it's a steel bolt in an aluminum case. Steel's a lot stronger than aluminum, so it'll pull those threads if you tighten them too much. Now, does the SYM also have the CVT? I'm sorry? Does the SYM? Yes. Yes. The, um, the CVT is becoming incredibly popular uh, recently. You know, scooters all the way from 50 cc's, they manufacture them all the way up to 600 cc's, 650 cc's have CVT transmissions. Um, not only scooters, but um, the Honda Civic Hybrid, for an example, that has a CVT transmission as well. And that stands for constant velocity? Constant variable, variable. transition. Transmission. Constant variable transmission. What, yes. what does that actually mean? Well, we will get to that as soon as I get this over. <laughs> I'll be doing uh, most of the things here by hand. Power tools are great, they make it go a lot faster. But they can also break stuff a lot easier too. So, just for the purpose of demonstration, do it the old fashioned way. What's that piece for? This piece right here um, is protection. This is actually for your kickstart rubber oh. buffer to prevent it from rubbing on the actual engine case. Um, if you notice on your kickstart, at least on the buddies here, there is a rubber bushing right here. Mm -hmm. If it's not there, it just means it fell off. It's not a huge deal. Um, but that actually comes up and meets up with this protecting mm -hmm. plate right here. Um, so, got eight bolts out, double checking everything. 
Um, so we're, we're ready to take the transmission cover off. Um, on the buddies and most of the more popular scooter models, there's no fluids whatsoever in the transmission housing. Um, some scooters, however, do, um, like the Yamaha Raz, for an example, um, it's a chain drive and it's in the entire side case has oil inside of it. So you just want to take a look at your owner's manual before you take the side cover off if you aren't sure. Because what could happen is if you take the side cover off, you'll have oil everywhere if it does have oil in there. We're good with the buddy, the dry transmission. So um, in order to take the side panel off, sometimes it comes off fairly easily. Um, there are a bit there are some points on the case where you can actually use a pry bar. The easiest way to do this, it's not going to damage anything, is just give a swift, swift hit to the kickstart mechanism and it will actually push the side cover off. So, let's give it a try. There you go. Jar it loose. We look free. It comes right off. So, what we'll be doing to you to this bike while we're in here is we'll clean it up a bit. Um, I'll show you how to do that, um, what you'll be looking for, and all of that. Um, the inside of the transmission cover, this is where your kickstart quadrant is located. It's also where your kickstart gear is located. The way that this works is when you push the kickstart lever down, splines actually push this gear out. I don't know if you can see that but it's pushing it away from the case. And now what that does is that pops this out enough to actuate with a little gear that is right here on the variator. Um, the variator is connected directly to your crankshaft. Um, there's no gearing between, it's just straight from variator, you know, exactly however fast you're cranking, um, piston you're going is how fast your variator is spinning. Um, so immediately the first thing you want to look at when you get in here is you want to take a look at your belt. You want to make sure that your belt is in good shape. Um, it is tough to tell sometimes. Um, not very often do you get in here and your belt starting to fray very badly. If it's fraying a whole lot, you're way past due of uh, changing your belt. Um, you're going to want to take a look at the edges of the belt particularly because that's where all of the friction um, and rubbing <coughs> happens. That's the actual surface that drives the scooter. The edge of the belt here, it's not the inside um, on CVT transmissions. Uh, it's a common misconception. People believe that the inside is what makes you move. Um, how, how many miles is a belt good for? Um, a belt usually good. Um, it's recommended to replace the belt at 7,000 miles. Um, inspect it at 5,000. So inspect every 5,000 and replace it, you know, without question every 7,000 miles. Um, and that goes for 50 cc's um, all the way up to the um, 250s and the 300s that we sell. The 600s and 650s may require it to be changed more often. It is a much larger belt, um, however, um, it's, you know, exerting a lot more force and you're capable of a lot higher speeds. I just want to consult your uh, owner's manual. To see when that needs to be done. And um, is that the clutch on the other end? You got the variator, and is that the clutch on the other? End? Yeah, we got the variator here. Um, and we also have the clutch here. I'm gonna, I'll take those off, and I'll break down each part and what they do individually, um, in a minute. Now, the other thing that you want to look for that should be fairly obvious right off the bat is you want to take a look at your clutch. Um, this outer part here, it's called the clutch bell. The really all you're seeing here is the clutch bell. Um, you want to take a look at this to make sure it's in good shape. Um, one telltale sign of this needing to be replaced is if it's bright blue a lot of times. I have an example, an example over here for you. Uh, this came off of a Roughhouse 50, but you can see how this one is blue. Basically what happens is that the metals become tempered because it's overheated. Um, and so that's why it's it's not supposed to be that pretty blue. You know? <laughs> what's causing it? Uh, what's causing this is if you're holding your rear brake and you're doing and you're revving uh, the engine up a whole lot, okay. or if you're trying to do burnouts, or if um, 
Because um, basically, yeah. exactly. Because basically, what you're doing when you're doing that, this never becomes disconnected from the crankshaft at all. The belt is always spinning, even when the bike is at idle. It's always spinning. So what happens is when you're trying to do burnouts or anything like that, you're revving this up so high, you're pulling the belt on the clutch, and the clutch weights are grinding up against this and causing so much friction, it overheats. Uh, and basically, it's hard to see. Um, if I got out, you know, bore gauges and cylinder gauges and things, you could tell that it is warped. Um, anytime that your clutch bell turns blue like this, it's you need to replace it. So I'll, we should stop doing that. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'll pass this around to everybody. Right. Just take a look and. Can you um, start the engine? Uh, yeah, with that cover off. Yeah, absolutely. We um, <laughs> with the buddies, it's okay to do that. Um, again, if it's. Uh, a transmission that has oil in the side cover, you won't want to do that. Um, right. But I'm gonna t I'll take it all apart. We'll clean it all up. I'll pass pass it all around, and then when we put it all back together, the grand finale. We'll do you be have showing to know how it works in motion. Do you happen to know if a Bergman 400 has oil in it? Um, I do not. I don't believe so. Um, a lot of times, I think they got away from that in the um, late 80s, early 90s, for various reasons. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll tell you other dip variations of different models and things like that as we go along. Um, so right off the bat, I noticed something is wrong with this transmission in here. Um, basically, there's some damage to this variator, the front pulley. Um, just one of the cooling fins has been knocked off. Now that does affect the weight of the variator. Um, and depending on how much is removed, it could definitely throw the whole uh, crankshaft out of whack due to the unbalanced variator spinning like that. Um, what again, that? what would cause that? Um, more than likely, it just hitting something. Like, this was probably ran without the cover on and somebody stuck their foot in there on accident or, you know, it, it's hard to tell. Really, the only thing that would cause that is something actually making contact with the variator while it's spinning. <laughs> Or um, taking the cover off. <laughs> right, no, the not cover... Being careful with, <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess that could happen, but this... Um, yeah, whenever you take the cover off, all the pressure is being exerted right on this gear in the center, so... Definitely want to be careful about all of that. But that's why it's in this bike. It's the Franken bike, so... All right. So in order to remove... Well, do you have any questions, anyone, so far? Anything at all? Now, if the cover had been on when that broke off, the piece would have fallen out when you opened up the cover, right? Right. It would have just gone off of it. Right. It should be. There are uh, a lot of the side covers are ventilated. Right. Um, this actually acts as a fan, this outer pulley here, uh, to cool the transmission. Um, now, the way that this gets air is this fan pulls air in through the front of the transmission cover right here. Um, and on stock models, there's a big rubber piece and a bunch of filters in there. Um, not on this bike. Uh, like a rock get in there. Right, exactly. <laughs> so that may have been what happened. A rock came in, hit it. You know, it's all it's said and done now. But um, yeah, so the front variator pulley sucks air in through the front and then also has an exhaust in the back for all the warm air to travel out. Um, now this. This is shaped like this so that it's waterproof, so that no water can get in there unless you were to completely submerge the engine. Um, but you can see also at the rear of the case, it matches that profile to vent all of that hot air out of there. So what was your question? Did I answer it? You did answer it. Cool. All right. Good deal. Um, cool. So in other words, to... Now we're going to move on to removing these uh, parts. <coughs> so there's never a gasket in there uh, between the, the cover and the hat. There, there usually is. The gasket on this one is actually still on this half. A lot of times with the buddies, it comes, you know, off with the cover. Uh, now since since this transmission is a dry transmission, the gasket's more of a formality than functional. Um, it is recommended to have it to prevent metal-on-metal -metal contact. Um, however, you're not sealing liquids in. 
you're not, it's really it's just to keep the water out, is what that gasket is for. It's to prevent water from seeping through that seam as opposed to normally gaskets keep oil from leaking out. So, so that gasket, odds are it's going to be damaged when you take the cover off? Yeah, it's, it, it, odds are it will be damaged. Um, as far as replacing the gasket, um, that's your call. You can make one just out of a gasket sheet. Right, absolutely. Um, if it does tear, a lot of times it tears on the thinner parts of the gasket. Um, basically, if you line it up correctly and stick it on there, you you're, should be good to go. Um, even if there's a small tear in the gasket. Because again, it's not keeping oil from seeping out. It's just preventing water from getting in. So form a gasket, a little bit of form a gasket, it's okay to mm -hmm. use something like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I wouldn't recommend using um, uh, a, like a sticky gasket maker because then you, you, it'd be very hard to get that, the cover transmission off. cover back off. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah. So, in order to remove these components, um, again, the component in the front of the bike, referring to you know in the direction the bike is facing, this is the variator. The variator is um, again directly attached to your crankshaft. It's a system of weights. Um, that cause the barrier to open and close at different um, RPMs. Um, and well, again, one, it might not make sense right now, but once I start taking it apart, you'll see, oh, okay, that's how it works. The whole system, it's, it's a pulley system, essentially. This is a lot of times referred to the front pulley, the drive pulley, and this is referred to the clutch pulley. Um, <clears throat> so in order to remove this, there's a lot of special tools that are recommended um, when using this, especially when you're using hand tools. Um, a lot of different uh, types out there. You got a variator holder. This is one type that they make. Basically, these splines right here line up with the fan blades on this front pulley. And you use a case bolt to hold it in place. Um, I don't demonstrate how that's used, but if you want to pass it around just to take a look at it. <coughs> <clears throat> and they also make different ma <coughs> excuse me different manufacturers make uh, holding tools that look a lot like this. Um, How does that go on? That actually it goes on by a case bolt. Oh. And just lines up with those fans. And it just sort of holds up like that. Right. Yeah. So it holds up so like that again. <laughs> yes. Uh, and again, I'll demonstrate how that works. Okay. Um, a lot of different manufacturers make. Um, holding tools like this. Uh, the genuine specific holding tool uh, would be one where it lines up with these two holes in the front of the variator. And you just place this right on there. Use your tool in the center um, to take that nut off. The reason why you need to have these tools is if you were to put a wrench on here and start turning, all you're going to be doing is turning the engine over. You're not going to be able to actually turn the nut off. So you need something to hold this in place so you can actually Take that nut off. <clears throat> I'll pass this one around to you as well. I'm sorry. How much are they? Uh, the tools they range anywhere from you know fifteen dollars, depending on the type of tool and the manufacturer and where it's made. Um, they even range up to hundred, hundred plus. Um, Recommendation? Uh, Bozzetti makes great stuff. They make stuff for um, vintage bikes and new bikes. Um, a lot of times, which. The best bet would be going to your dealer and asking for the dealer uh, specific tools for the, you know, like Genuine Scooter Company. Tons of specialized tools just for Genuine Scooters. Um, you know, as far as the Stellas, endless amounts of uh, specialized tools for the Stellas. It's a whole nother, whole nother day. Um, and the buddies and, and all of that, so. Um, Another way to do that, where we do it around the shop here, um, we are professionals, so we know what we're doing. Uh, we use an impact gun. Impact gun is great. I, you know, I'd say I have no qualms about taking stuff off. You can take bolts off all day with this thing. I wouldn't recommend putting them back on if you're particularly new to how this works. Um, there's a nickname for this in, in the industry, and it's the, um, the thread puller, the bolt shearer the smasher, the breaker, the don't ever use it, the uh, <laughs> uh, name it, and it's got, it's got that uh, name it. Thank you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this to take the uh, front, 
variator off. I'll show you how this is used. You're going to need one of the case bolts, potentially two of the case bolts, in order to use this. How it works is you figure out how it lines up onto this variator, and you find a case bolt that will work. Stick this through and hold it in one of the case, uh, you know, where they were existing, where the threads are, just like that. Best way to do this, looking at the bolts here. Probably going to be pretty good to use this top left hole with the bolt. So I'll thread it in through the case. You don't want to tighten it down all the way, however, you want to make sure a lot of the threads are seated, <coughs> otherwise you could snap the bolt or pull the threads if it isn't in there far enough. Um, these tools are never really easy to use, they're always kind of a pain in the butt, but... Um, you know they, they make a tool that's got a belt that comes down, it's um, got a belt for holding things like that, I've used that before, or I've used... I know you probably shouldn't use a screwdriver across those fins, but I've done that before. Yeah, it, that would work. The only reason why I, w I would recommend not is because you could break fins off very easily. That what about way. the belt tool? You know what I'm talking about? Belt tool? Yeah, it's, that's a, it's like a... Strap wrench. Strap yeah, wrench. strap wrench. You, you can use that if that works. Yeah, Great, why not? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they use that a lot for the... Um, I'm trying to figure this. Uh, they use that a lot for like oil filters and things like that. Maybe down the bottom. May, no, I'm not going to be able to get it down there. It's right there behind the bench. There you go. Ah. Every bike's a little different. Takes a little fiddling. What do you actually call that tool again? It is um, basically a holding tool. Very, just like a very holding tool. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it is tough. A lot of the tools that they make are worth it. A lot of them are really good. It, it really is trial and error. This particular tool I'm using is uh, infuriating, to say the least. But for the sake of education, I'm going to try my best here, everybody, not to. What do you normally use? Uh, impact wrench. <laughs> <laughs> The Terminator. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but how do you hold the variator? Um, in fact, you actually don't need to hold the variator. Um, because it, what the impact does, it um, incorporates spinning to the left with pound, like a hammer hitting onto it. So essentially, it just knocks it off so quickly that the variator doesn't have time to think. <laughs> Alright, so... The you know, pack wrench is a good thing to have. Yeah, absolutely. Now again, I recommend take bolts off all day with that thing. But until you really get used to the power of it, um, don't put any bolts on. Is that on. the pack wrench you're referring to? Yeah. Or one that you bang with the hammer? This, this one here. You don't want to use the hammer type. Because, again, the variator is connected directly to your crankshaft. If there's any sort of, you know, horizontal line. Yeah, if there's any sort of bend or, or, or anything with that crankshaft, everything's going to go out of whack. You're going to lose bearings, you're going to lose your seals, you're going to lose your engines. So, um, really, an impact gun is all you're going to want to use. Um, on the Buddy 150s, it's a 19 millimeter bolt. Check to make sure it's snug before you go. Um, wrenching on it. Now everything everything on these uh, most scooters, pretty much all scooters is going to be <coughs> metric. Even even nowadays American cars are all metric. Um, it just seems that's the way it's going. So you don't want to use standard tools on these bikes because that's how you'll round off some nuts or not be able to get your socket back off when you're, when you're done. Alright, so we'll see how this goes with this tool. Um, basically, you need to hold the tool into place. Make sure that the fan blades are lined up. 
That's engaging. How many blades? Just one? Um, right now it's just one. Yeah, it's uh, uh, you can try to get it to engage two, but it's you know not going to happen essentially. So, so a screwdriver, you at least engage two. Um, not really. Yeah, 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 the good news is your shop rate is how much? You don't mind if we enjoy you, don't we? No, that's fine. We appreciate you trying to teach us the right way. Yeah. 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 Which is bring it to the shop. You <laughs> tell the keys. <laughs> this is a stealth commercial for bringing to the shop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, you need a new value barrier to cover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you hold the tool in place, give it a good, some elbow grease, a couple of curse words. Yeah. This thing's on here tight, so it's, it's definitely not easy. Yeah! Impact yeah. wrench. Impact wrench. Yeah. 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 So again, that's a, you very, tried. <laughs> that's a very ineffective uh, holding tool. As you can see the one that we were using there. Yeah. However, you can get good ones that make it possible. Uh, this is a pneumatic type impact wrench. Um, the electric impact wrenches, again, they're great for taking stuff off. Terrible for putting stuff back on. Um, all the ones I've had experience with, when you release the trigger, they still spin for about 30 seconds. So you don't want to use those to put things back on. This one, you still want to hold just with your hand, the variator. Ta -da. Makes life easier. Doesn't make the pocketbook any heavier. <coughs> Here we are with our instruction manual, trying to figure out how to use that tool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now with the front variator not free, let get rid of this. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've gotten this to work, this tool. We Alright, so now what you'll want to make sure to do is um, just, you know, make sure when you take this off, there will be a lot of tension behind the belt and it'll cause this to push forward a little bit. Don't let uh, these two center pieces fall out because then you might lose the washer or you could lose the gear as it rolls across the shop. Um, so go ahead and put your hand over the front just like this. Pull the entire assembly off, straight out, just like that. Mm -hmm. Pop these two pieces out. Now we'll get to the different components of the actual transmission. First, there's just a washer, just a spacer, and also to prevent wear on the actual kickstart gear. Um, this kickstart gear, as well as the variator, are spline. The reason why they're spline, the actual crankshaft is spline as well, right here. Um, Basically, the reason why the kickstart gear would be splined is when you kickstart the bike, you need to move the crankshaft so the piston turns over so it starts. Um, alternately, when the crankshaft spins, the splines make this outer pulley spin as well. Um, Which way is that turn it's looking at? It? Looking at it, it spins this way. Absolutely. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll take this all apart, show you the different components, pass it all around. Uh, this is known. This is also known as the outer pulley, um, outer variator pulley, um, and I'll show you why they call them pulleys. Because essentially, that's it's all the CVT is is a system of pulleys. Um, there you go. There's no uh, keyway or anything to line it up with. It's just, I'm just sorry. Our, there's no kind of a keyway to line it up. Line up the splines. Yeah. Nope. Just, just any way you put it on. Absolutely. Right. Just make sure okay. it's on the splines. Okay. Uh, so the belt's here now, and you can actually just pull the belt out of the way and pull it down. Now, if you wanted to take it off, would you have to move it with the clutch? Um, 
well. Most cases, yes. Um, it just depends. You'll have to look whether or not there's enough clearance between the actual transmission housing and the belt in order to get it out. Um, it is easier just to remove the whole clutch assembly. But, um, now somebody had marked this at one time. Got a little mark there. <clears throat> yes, that was uh, just from from the factory, and that was just to let you know um, whether or not the nut is spin, spun or anything like that. Basically, um, you'll see it a lot of times on the front of your bike too. They'll mark the bolts from factory, so that you know during the pre-delivery inspection and anything like that, it makes it easy to see that's still tight, still where it was. Um, now, when you take it apart at home and put it back together, you can get you know just a little model paint kit and make another mark for yourself. Um, yeah, but you'd never see that behind there, right? I mean, you wouldn't see that more. That's uh, true. Well, the mark actually extended past that. It just it's oh. worn off. Um, so, uh, the rear variator pulley. Um, when you pull this off. It's kind of tricky because there's all, uh, six different weights behind here, and they're called roller weights. Um, some people call them sliders. Um, you want to make sure to pull this entire unit out as an assembly, otherwise your rollers will go flying everywhere. Um, basically to do that, you reach your fingers behind, put another finger on top, and just press the uh, components together, and pull it off, and you get the rear variator pulley, has a little cooling fan blades on the back, and this is the reverse side. Uh, this is what makes your entire scooter work. This is what makes the uh, half of the constant variable transmission. Um, the reason why they call it the constant variable transmission is because there's no gears one through five. There's essentially gears zero through 20,000, depending on how you broke it all up. Um, basically, it's always changing, always constant variating, uh, constantly variating to you know the hills that you're climbing, the speeds that you're going, um, and your RPMs and everything like that. Everything on this transmission works by centrifugal force. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Could you put this on that so I see the you know the angle that it's. Absolutely. Set at absolutely. Where the belt hits. Yeah, absolutely. Handy back real quick. Um, basically, when this is all put together, we can see from the belt angle. Yeah. Looks well, just like okay. this. This front pulley stays static the entire time. The bike is 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 uh, moving. What actually spins? I mean, what actually moves is this rear pulley. It goes. I'll have to take the weights out real quick. Okay. Put it back in, no worries. But this back um, variator plate moves forward and backwards. So it opens and closes. When you're at idle, it's open. And the belt is there at the, ba the very base? Uh, yes. And that's why you're saying the belt works from the side. Right, absolutely. Because all the friction is done on this smooth, uh, the smooth surface of the pulleys on the side of the belt. Um, and when you're at higher RPMs, the actual variator closes, which causes the belt to jump up to the top, outer edge of the pulleys. And so that's why it's constant variable. You know, you give it gas, <coughs> accelerates, going downhill, uphill. It's always moving, always moving, just like this. So when you're at <coughs> high speed, those are closed. <coughs> That diameter is at its widest. Right. The back of the clutch is at the smallest. Correct. Okay. And, I'll, and yeah, the clutch works in the inverse, like inversely. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, the opposite of this, basically. Um, so, at idle, you're open. The front of the belt is at a small. Uh, if you think about it, like gears on a bicycle, it's smaller in the front, larger in the back. That makes it really easy to pedal, mm -hmm. right? Whenever this closes, it makes the belt larger in the front, the clutch opens, makes it smaller in the back. And that's like your top gear on a bicycle. Um, so, now the way that this back pulley moves is by a system of weights, uh, your roller weights. 
The roller weights look just like this. There's six of them. They uh, vary in size for each model. Um, scooter, the larger CC bikes have really big ones. Um, smaller CCs have smaller roller weights just because you don't need as much weight for the smaller bikes. Um, the reason why they're round is I'll, I'll explain that to you as well. But the reason why they're round is they actually sit in these little um, ramps on the back side of your variator plate, your back pulley. Um, and what happens when the variator spins, this roller weight sits here at the bottom at idle. As the centrifugal force increases, the weight will slide up this ramp. And that's what causes the, it to move forwards and backwards. Um, now there's six of these, different models of different amounts. Six is pretty much the standard. Um, what are they made of? Uh, basically just plastic. Plastic with a little bit of a, a lot of times it's brass in the middle. Um, you know, here it's some sort of alloy. It's like brass. It's dry, obviously. It's dry inside. So. Right. It is dry. All of the, uh, all the black stuff that you're probably getting on your fingers right now, that's all from your belt. Because um, what happens is since it's dry and there's so much friction, your belt dust just gets everywhere. So that's why you want to open it up and clean it out every now and then. About every 5,000 miles, you want to clean clean out the whole transmission. And I guess the flat spots, that's bad? Flat spots are bad, absolutely. Um, basically what happens is over time, these not so much, they don't, they don't so much roll as they do slide up this ramp on the back here. So what that'll do is it'll cause flat spots on your roller. Um, real easy way to test it, find a flat surface. This isn't best flat surface, like a piece of glass or something. Roll your variator weight and if it stops suddenly, you got a flat spot. It's, it's not uncommon for there to be multiple flat spots on the on the roller weight. Basically, what the flat spots are going to do is it's going to cause um, a hesitation um, when you give it throttle. It might not be so much that you'd be able to notice it right away, um, but it does cause you know some variator slack whenever you're trying to get going real quick. The different qualities of the uh, There are, there are. There, um, um, you know, you got the cheapo stuff and you got the real nice stuff. Um, really, all of it works. Um, the more expensive, the nicer quality um, roller weights. They're going to use a little bit more resilient uh, materials, so you don't have to replace them quite as often. Um, as far as the weight goes, really the only difference is going to be the materials used and um, frequency of maintenance with the higher end rollers as opposed to the lower end rollers. Um, From a modification standpoint, um, if you change the weight, that sort of changes the characteristics of the bike? Or it does, it does. Um, is basically, that okay to do? would you recommend just leaving that alone? And it's um, nice to do, but you wouldn't recommend it. Well, just, you know, like I always say, uh, the bike comes from factory like that for a reason. Um, no, but it's it's totally fine with the with the, CB, with the uh, CVT transmission. You can it's totally user friendly as far as um, um, you know tuning it, performance tuning it. Um, there's not much, thank you, not much you can do in here that's going to cause damage to the engine. Um, you're not changing the fuel to air ratio. You're not doing any, you know messing with the lubrication system. The rule of thumb is with Roller weights, lighter roller weights, you have a lot faster acceleration. You're off the line a lot quicker. However, it lowers your top speed. With heavier roller weights, it takes a little longer to get going, but you have a much higher top speed. Um, and if you think about that, it's basically, you know, if you have more weight on, um, on a wheel and you start spinning it, you can get it to a much higher velocity before it reaches maximum velocity. Whereas with the lighter wheel, it won't be spinning quite as, it won't have as much force behind it to power you through you know, wind or hills or anything like that. So it's, it's free weight. So this, when, you, when you buy parts, you can just buy the rollers. So yeah, absolutely, you can just buy rollers. You know, there's, there's more than just the rollers. There's also, um, uh, they call them sliders. And they're actually these little pieces here. You go on the back of your 
um, ramp cover, essentially. What this does here, this provides the stationary point for the back variator pulley to move. Um, essentially, if you look at the assembly without this rear pulley, you have, this is in the back, this spacer right here goes right in the center just like this, and then this outer pulley goes right on top. So this is what it looks like here. Um, so these two pieces are always stationary. The only piece that moves are the roller weights and the rear um, variator pulley. Now the way that that works is whenever the uh, variators, what's up man? Uh, whenever the variators roll up the ramp, they apply pressure on the stationary object causing the back variator to, to pull, push away from it. If I'm, if I'm not really being very clear or you're no, not you're understanding, you're doing great. let me know. Um, so this object here is stationary at all points on the, on the uh, crankshaft and this pulley is what spins, I mean what slides in and out like that. Um, and what makes that happen is the variator weights on the ramps applying force to the stationary object pushing this away from it, pushing it back. These sliders are very important too. Um, the sliders you want to make sure that they're the right tolerance and they're also the right size. You don't want to put um, a slider that's too large into the slots on the edges here. Because what that'll do is it'll pinch the slider closed, causing it to pinch the sliding surface so that it won't open or close at all. Um, or it won't open and close smoothly at all. And you want there to be you know, the least amount of friction between these two points. You don't want to use grease, you don't want to use lube or anything like that. Um, this is actually just um, you know, synthetic material that you know, keeps friction to the minimum. Um, and as you can see, I'll show you, I'll pass this around. This bike takes a lot of abuse. So you can see it, these sliders definitely would need to be replaced. Um, but you can see just by pulling that up and down, it's not sliding very smoothly or easily at all. Yeah, it should. It should. Yes. And again, that has a direct effect on the performance of your scooter. Um, if your rear pulley on your variator isn't sliding back and forth very smoothly at all, it's going to be jumpy and basically affect you know, your power band and, and everything. All of the power that the crankshaft is producing being um, transferred to the rear wheel is going to be affected by poor sliders. Um, spot, you know, flat spotted um, roller weights, um, all that kind of stuff. So you just want to make sure everything is smooth, good to go. Another thing you want to look out for is on your actual pulley surface. If it's pitted, if there's a lot of divots in it, if there's you know ridges and valleys um, or any imperfections at all, that's going to affect how fast your belt wears out as well. Um, you know, these usually. Um, you know, unless a rock were to get, get in there and start doing some damage, these are usually pretty good to go for, you know, about 10,000 miles, depending on the scooter. Again, if you have a 650, maybe a little bit less. To replace the variator? Yes, absolutely. The variator will need to be replaced at, at some point in its lifespan. I mean, you're um, talking 10,000 miles, right? 10,000 miles. That's not very, very long. Not, not, it's not very long. I mean, you, you're going to want to take a look at it. Again, it's... Yeah. Because you can see here even the outer edge where the belt doesn't travel. Um, like a ridge. Exactly. There's a little ridge there. You can't really feel it now, but you'll be able to over time. Um, and what that does, it, it affects your the ratios. That, um, basically, if this were to get ground down on the outer edge, the belt would not be expanding to the edge as far as it would if it were brand new. So that'll affect your top speed and everything like that. So the variator, I mean, every 10, 20,000 miles, you need to replace the whole thing? 
The uh, sliders, the rollies. <laughs> the, sli the sliders and the rollers, you're going to want to replace yeah. a lot sooner than that. Usually around five to 7,000 miles. Wow. Um, you know, you, could, you really go through these fairly quickly. Um, um, it, it, the automatic bikes are great because as long as you keep this, the roller weights changed, the slider's in good shape, uh, make sure your belt's in good shape. Um, and, all, and if you check all of these components, you know, every five, 7,000 miles, the bike will essentially, you know, effectively it could last forever. It's really, th those are a lot of where the wear and tear items come into play, you know. Okay, how much is transmission? like the sliders? And the, uh, uh, sliders run anywhere from, you know, two bucks to 10 bucks. Um, the roller weights, depending on where you get them, they could run you about 60 bucks for a really nice uh, brass pair with the, you know, Kevlar line, you know, all the fancy bells and whistles and all that kind of stuff. And, <laughs> So you basically replace the belt, <clears throat> the rollers, and the sliders. Mm -hmm. and then there. Should, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you can bring it here. Yeah, well, there you um, but again, the variator you're not going to need to replace uh, quite as often as that stuff. By so that's five, roughly five, and that's roughly ten. Yeah, right, yeah exactly. Um, um, the owner's manual outlines a lot of times when it needs to be checked and when it needs to be replaced and things. However, the buddy manual is outlined, it needs an oil change, I think it's every 200 miles. <laughs> it doesn't need at all. I'm not sure why they put that in the manual. I think they left a zero off at the end or something. But, um, <clears throat> so that's, that's what works. Every, every five to 7,000 miles, you want to look, inspect, and change your belt. Look at your rollers um, and your sliders and all that stuff. So, if I could get the <coughs> rear pulley back. Sorry, I need one. Did I already dirty? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's already been installed. It's already been installed. Been installed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, what I'll do, I'll put, um, I'll pass this around one more time, but I'm going to put the roller weights in there. When you put the roller weights in, you want to make sure that they go in this way. I'll put five of them in the correct way and one in the wrong way so you can see the difference there. Would you try and dodge that flat spot right now, or does it even matter? It doesn't matter at all, because since they're round, they, um, oh cool, it doesn't even fit in the wrong way in this one. But, uh, um, usually it's, it doesn't matter, because since it's round, it's always floating around in there. A lot of times, if you get um, a really noisy transmission, it'll be because these sliders are too loose, so this is clinking around and knocking around a whole lot. Um, also, um, your rollers will be really worn down, so they're literally bouncing around a whole lot in there. So they're always changing, always spinning around. Um, Dr. Pulley, that's another ego. Uh, I put one in the wrong way, just so you can see. Dr. Pulley is a company that makes a lot of um, aftermarket performance parts. Um, they have a product that's actually a roller weight, but they call it the slider weight because it's not shaped in a round shape at all. Um, effectively, what they've done is the bottom half is round and the top is sort of at a uh, an angle, 45 degree angle like this. That's 45. Um, and what happens instead of the entire round slider uh, roller weight sliding up the ramp, this one it just falls over and pushes it out. So essentially, it kind of turns into a little like shutter valve sort of deal, where when you hit the gas, boop, falls over and it's wide open, closed, open, closed, <laughs> as opposed to the, uh, and that's great for performance, you know, if you need to get off, if you need to get off the line of that green light faster than anyone else, <laughs> <laughs> the bike that's what you need. Tough to do. <laughs> exactly, so, um, so yeah, so that's pretty much, you can get performance variators as well. Uh, performance yeah. variators just have, you know, a, a a different ramp form and shape and everything just to get it up to speed as fast, quickly as possible. Um, that's really where the tuning comes in as far as the barrier side of this goes. Um, what about the clutch? How often you got to replace the clutch? Is that the same? Frequency? Clutch, you're going to want to inspect it around the same time. Again, the clutch completely um, depends on, you know, whether or not you drive uphill every day constantly. All You know, like, all you ever drive is uphill. Or, um, Never down. Yeah, or if you are trying to do burnouts or anything, or if, um, you know, different conditions and things like that. Like if you were living in San Francisco, you need to replace it a lot quicker than if you were living in Omaha, mm -hmm. you know. Um, 
But I'll definitely show you um, what to look out for, what the tolerances would be, um, and when it would be a, you know, recommended to change different components or the entire clutch assembly. Um, again, this right here, are, any, are all of you familiar with what the crankshaft is, what the crankshaft does, what, what it looks like, what it's responsible for? Okay. You're not? Okay. Alright, the crankshaft is what connects the piston to the transmission, essentially. The basic, you know, breaking it down, um, that's what it does. What happens is that the combustion occurs at the top of the cylinder, forcing the piston down. That energy is uh, transferred through a connecting rod from the piston to the actual crankshaft. And the crankshaft spins providing the, uh, the energy needed to the transmission. Um, that's definitely a basic explanation. Um, actually, I have some crankshafts laying around. Let me go grab one for you. Can you see it very well from that? Screw? I'm sorry? Can you, can you see it pretty well from that screw? Uh, well, this is, you can just see the one edge of the crankshaft. I'll get the entire crankshaft and, you know, out. And I'm just kind of curious to see what it looked like in there. Yeah, if you want to come on up. Well, maybe we can have yeah, sure, absolutely. If you want to come up and take a look at this, now's the time. I'm going to go grab a uh, crankshaft with some inner bits just to show you that. Yeah. Yeah. Single cylinder crankshaft. Here's the piston. It connects on the top just like this. Mm -hmm. When the you know when the combustion happens, it forces this piston down, and this connecting rod. It makes it so that the entire crankshaft spins. Okay. Now, if you watch, it's definitely hard without a jig set up. Mm -hmm. But as it forces the piston down, it spins and then comes back up. And that force down, down, that's what keeps your engine going. You know, and that's that's uh, that's really the epitome of a precision machine, right there. Um, this is where your crankshaft, I mean your variator is attached to, right here. So that's what, it, that's what it is. If you look in there, you see from here up. That's it. The other side is where your um, flywheel is attached to. Um, flywheel is where all, you know, basically the generator where all the electricity comes from and, you know, when it knows when to tell the spark plug to spark and all that stuff. But right here, from here up, is what the variator attaches to. So it, again, it's directly connected to your crankshaft. This is the heart of your engine. If any damage is done to this, any damage done to these splines, if this is hit, knocked, tweaked at all, you're toast. You're going to need to get a new one of these, which involves total rebuild. It means um, a new scooter. That's uh, TSR. <laughs> total scooter replacement. <laughs> no, so that's, I'll, it's a little oily. If you, you want to pass it around. I don't see that piston. Mm, here's the piston. Here. <laughs> That's Buddy? Um, that one, I believe it's a Buddy 150. Um, and again, these are all for sale in our garage sale today. Um, <laughs> I don't need one just yet. Special use pistons? <laughs> hey, yeah, special use pistons, why not? We'll give you a deal. Um, the TSR deal. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of this stuff, like this crankshaft in particular, um, I uh, came out of a bike where a customer put a performance kit on their buddy. We had that done for them. Um, so that's where the piston came from and um, all that stuff. But again, we're only doing transmission today, guys. So <laughs> we'll get to the top end and the, you know, maybe if you're feeling daring, we'll get the electrical stuff later on. But oh, I think this is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm taking a sip. We'll go in and bust it and you can fix it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, all right. Anybody? Uh, anyone have any other questions as far as the variator stuff goes? Everyone good? Um, is everyone? Is everyone cold? We can shut the door and turn the heat on. <laughs> I, I work in this. I'm used to this. So, you guys got to tell me what, what your favorite Those evaluation form scores just went up. <laughs> I'm wearing a long time. <laughs> <laughs>
Alright, so now we're going to move on to the clutch. Um, um, I'm pretty sure we have clutches that are all taken apart, and I can go grab those just like I did with the, with the uh, crankshaft as soon as I get done with the spiel. Um, a lot of times with the clutch, there's uh, holding tools for this as well. Um, more than likely, the clutch holding tool is going to look more like this. Now, this is this is for a 50cc, so I'm not, not sure if it'll work for this. Let's find out. Basically, the holding tools slide into these slots right here um, and that's what prevents it from spinning. So we'll use the impact. <laughs> it's great. If you look, if you look at any um, uh, like scooter tip websites or anything and they have the pictures of the guys like using the holding tools. You always see the picture of them you know, they got their wrench and they're sitting there just like this. Oh it's easy, totally. You know that they just take the picture and then Photoshop out the hammer on Alright, so old trusty bits whenever you take this apart. There is a washer underneath here. I don't want to lose that. Uh, we'll keep the variator stuff separate over here. Does everyone get to see the variator with the weights in there and, and all that kind of uh, Alright, so just take the nut and washer, set it aside. Now, the clutch comes apart in two pieces. Um, you have the clutch bell, which is what I passed around earlier, that pretty blue ashtray now. Um, basically, you grab the bell just like this, pull it straight off. The clutch bell is essentially, it works just like um, a drum brake. Um, if you're familiar with, you know, if you ever done a brake job on an old older car or even a newer car, the rear brakes, the drum brake, it has the pads that push on the outside of the drum. That's that's all this is. That's it. Um, it's a specific weight um, determined by the manufacturer of what the weight should be for this bike to operate, you know, within all the tolerances and everything that they, they wanted to present to you as a product. Um, you can get performance clutches that are lighter, heavier, whole nine yards. Um, as far as what will work for your bike, you'll have to look into more of what you know the recommended models are um, for the part that you're buying, etc. So forth. just do some research before you drop 150 bucks on you know, a clutch bill. Um, this one here, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, again, you're going to be looking for any sort of variation of color. That's a telltale sign of overheating. Um, you're also going to want to look on the inside here because on the inside of the clutch belt is where the clutch pads rub and that's where the friction comes. And I'll explain a little bit more in a second and make a little bit more sense. Um, one other thing you want to look at is exactly like the variator was. The clutch bell has splines on the inside. You want to make sure those are all in good shape. They're nice and sharp. They aren't Munch, they aren't twisted, there's no gophers living in there or anything. You want to make sure they're good to go. Um, so, that's the clutch bell. The next part of the clutch, the belt's going to come with it. Pull it right off. Looks pretty similar to the variator. However, instead of all of the uh, mechanical parts being in the back side, like on the variator, they're on the front. Think. This works the exact opposite way that the variator works. 
to ever be switched around. Belt comes right off. That's it. Uh, I'll talk about the belt for a minute now. Uh, this belt is in, surprisingly to most people, this belt's in pretty crappy shape. Uh, it looks like, oh, we can still read the numbers nice. And it doesn't look too bad. Uh, if you feel the edge right here, you can feel how it's, there's a little bit of a lip there. There's actually a little bit of frame that's starting, which lets you know you went a little bit too long without changing your belt. This one is also, uh, it also has a real bad like groove right in the center here where it's been dragging. A lot of times what happens is when you give it a throttle and you back off and get back on, the slack, the temporary slack in the belt causes it to come up and slap here or here on the um, in the control case. A lot of larger scooters, um, for instance the MP3500, it has an actual guide in the center that prevents that from happening. Basically it's all it is just a wheel mounted in the middle that prevents the belt from closing too much and it keeps it all tight and the tension is all where they should be. Um, so yeah, this belt's in, in you know, we, we still replaced. use it, I'm sorry? Should be it should be replaced, yeah. I, I wouldn't use this in a regular bike. And again, your hands might get black, you need a rag, I have some rags as well. Pass that around with it. Um, so again, you know, a lot of people would look at that belt and be like, it's in great shape, there's nothing wrong with it, you know? But you just have to know what you're looking for. I think that'll definitely help you see. Um, and it, it'll sneak up on you too a lot of times. I've only ever seen one case where a belt actually completely pulled apart. Um, and I think that was, was a friend of mine who had, had the same belt for about seven years. <laughs> so, definitely. Now the belt's Kevlar reinforced, but there's a lot of rubber components in the belt as well. Rubber wears out, it'll dry rot. Um, it'll crack, it'll you know, do all that crazy stuff. Basically, same reason why you'd want to change the tires on a car that's been sitting for 10, 15 years. Same reason why you want to change a belt that hasn't been changed in one or two years. And again, you can also see, this one's actually, it looks pretty clean in here, um, surprisingly, but you can see all this black stuff. It's all belt dust. So you just wipe it out? Yeah, you can just wipe it out. Um, a, lot, a lot of times what you can do is put a bunch of rags and you can use some brake clean and a little brush and brush it out. You want to make sure not to get on any of the seals or the greases um, or anything over here on the front either. But yeah, just, you know, even a little toothbrush and some brake clean and polish it out like that. Now, uh, the way that this works, again, this clutch bell, goes right here on the outside. This entire assembly is always spinning. It's always spinning. Even at idle, always spinning. It's directly connected to the belt. The belt's directly connected to the variator, which is directly connected to the crankshaft. The crankshaft's always, the bike's on, always spinning. The variator always spinning, the belt always spinning, always making this spin. Now, uh, this responds um, based off of what the variator is doing. Um, it, it's pretty much, this reacts to the variator's actions, essentially. You can think of it that way. Like if the variator, you know, opens up real quick, this will spin faster and this will, you know, do the opposite of that. Um, anyways, all right. So what happens is this is always spinning. What makes the rear wheel spin are these weights right here. These are actually weights and fr friction pads. When you get to a certain RPM, what will happen is these will actually open up, kind of like a spider or something, you know, with three legs. Uh, but it will open up like that, causing these pads here to make contact with the inner edge of this clutch bell, causing the clutch bell to spin and that's what transfers that energy to your gearbox and to your rear wheel. If you look, just to demonstrate, put this back on. 
that always spins. It's always spinning no matter what. The rear wheel is not spinning. Take this piece off. Put the clutch belt on. Make sure the splines are lined up. You don't need to be any certain way. Just make sure not to. Why isn't it going on? You know, start hitting it. <laughs> so there you go. It's on there. Spin the bell. Tire spins. Spin it backwards. Tire spins. This is directly connected to the rear wheel through the trans. You know, through the transmission gears. All the transmission gears are back here. This is what converts this um, amount of rotation to the correct amount of rotation in your rear wheel for it to you know, put power you through. There's nothing actually that changes gear in the transmission. It doesn't change gear. All it is is... Because you're... Exactly. The memory this, of that. Yeah, this is what does the gear change. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. Back here, basically all it is is... Uh, Rec drive. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a series, I think, of two or three gears. Basically, one's smaller, one's bigger. It just thank you very much. Uh, pretty much, it just makes it so that if it were directly connected with no gears at all, if this were the rear axle, yeah. you wouldn't be able to move. Oh, right. Exactly, because this is spinning so fast, but the rear wheel can't spin as quickly as this would be able right. to. So it, you know, it makes it smooths it all out, makes it usable at the rear tire. But again, you know, in Versa, I'll spin the tire. And you can see this is spinning a lot faster than the tire spin. Yeah. It's not one to one ratio. I'll, I'll do a quarter turn. I spin about three or four times. So behind all of this is that's where the gear housing is and stuff like that. Again, we're going to have a clinic in the spring um, that will show you how to get your bike ready for the spring season. Um, Dewinterize it essentially. Um, that involves changing the gear oils and things like that, and engine oil and regular maintenance stuff like that. So we're not going to get into it today, but um, when that time comes, we'll get into more the trend, you know, the gearbox back here, essentially. So sticking to the CVT, do you have any questions about that so far? <coughs> the, uh, do you replace the pads on the clutch? You do. You do. Um, this clutch um, comes apart. A lot of different parts to it. Let me actually see if I can grab different components of it. Um, there's a nut right here. This big nut is what holds it all together. If you take your clutch belt off and you look here, you'll see where the factory marked it. If that's off, even the slightest, you're going to have problems for sure. You want to make sure that it's definitely still within its tolerances. Yeah, I'll pass it around, absolutely. I'm going to go see if I can get, um, I think it's just going to be in this box right here. See if I can get the clutch to take the part. Yeah. Uh, all right, so. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um. You definitely want to be careful as well, um, because again, if that nut on the outside is loose at all, what could happen is this spring will cause this to pop off and go flying. There's a lot of pressure with this spring here. Um, is that spring consumable? Does it wear out? It does. It does. The um, spring is something you want to check as well. Um, a lot of times. It usually around 10,000 miles you want to check it out, um, but again, it's tough. You need tools to clamp this together and also a special nut tool in order to get that nut off in the first place. Um, I recommend Fred as well. <laughs> um, how, how do you check out the spring? Basically, um, what you'll do is if you see the actual component there. You screwdriver, right? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we had our hammer, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Basically, this here is, is notched so it fits on a certain way. Alright. Over that part, let's see if we can do this. Take the swing and you almost need some sort of tension gauge. Right. Usually, but, you know, it's basically it's one of those things where, you know, after 15,000, 20,000, you know, 
it'd just be safe. But what the spring is responsible for is how hard these pulleys press against the belt. You can see, I got a tape shift. All right. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, you can see that that spring is what's three. Again, it's responsible for how hard those pulleys are pressing on that belt. That's a tunable option. You can put a firmer spring in there to grip the belt tighter so you have less slippage on the belt. Uh, you can put a lighter spring in there to detune your scoop. You know, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could. Uh, make a lot of belts slippy, you know. Um, maybe for a you know beginner rider you might want to do that for a kid or something. You know? but, um, basically when you take that nut off, first thing that comes off is this here. And this is the housing that holds your friction plates. Now again, when this spins to a certain RPM, they open up. Now, that the RPM at which they open and make contact and convert that power directly to your rear wheel through the clutch belt, that RPM is determined by the, the tension of spring you have in this uh, mechanism here. You can't see it from the front. You have to, you have to take it apart in order to do this. But if you flip it around, you'll see on the back side, in these little grooves, there's springs. Unless you're not cycling, I not cycling. Make sure you oh, circlets as well. There's circlets on the outside, springs on the inside. The springs are responsible for how quickly or how slowly the pads open up. So that's the part you replace the good one. So the tolerance for um, those friction pads, very much the same as, here I can, I'm not sure if there's something on it. I'll get you a new one, there might be gas on that one. You never know. Um, tolerances are pretty much, if you're getting down to about a millimeter, you don't want to change it. Um, thickness on the pad? Thickness on the pad, absolutely. Get some calipers out, check it out. Um, you know, the overall, it's probably only four or five millimeters brand new. It takes a while for it to wear out, but again, it's just like uh, just like changing your brakes. You know, you got to do it every now and then. Right now, the whole pad. Now you want to measure from here up. Just from there up, and you're probably, probably, yeah, like right on this edge here. Yeah. Because if this is making contact with your outer belt, so it's going to be a loud grinding. Yeah. And it's not good. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's the same. Same. So now those little springs, those three little, thank you. Yeah. Those three little springs, those are another option for tuning as well. If you put Firmer, stiffer springs on the pads. Oh, oh yeah. There you go. Um, if you put firmer springs in there, basically what that does it delays those friction pads from making contact with the clutch belt until it gets to a much higher RPM. Uh, a lot of guys who drag race automatic bikes, they put real stiff springs in there, so it doesn't even contact the rear wheel until you're at. Six, seven thousand, ten thousand RPMs. Um, basically, what that's going to do is you're going to do wheelies every time. <laughs> you'll, you'll go flying. Um, if you put lighter springs, it will, um, you know, cause the pads to make contact sooner, um, preventing it slows you down a little bit as far as your overall acceleration. Uh, and it's not so jerky. It won't jolt forward. You know, a lot of times if um, if you're riding your scooter and you give it gas and it sort of hesitates and jumps forward, that could be a combination of your rollers are being are worn out and they're shoddy. Your sliders are sticking a little bit, and the springs in the back they're you know aren't lubricated correctly. The clutch, you, there's a lot of lubrication points on the clutch. The variator, no grease, no anything like that, it's, it's all dry.
The clutch, I'll show you the different points where you want to have lubrication. Is it a dry lubrication? It's just grease. It's uh, um, you know, axle grease. You can get it at Napa or anything like that. Um, um, there's also bearings inside of the clutch housing, all that kind of stuff, which I'll show you now. Once underneath the uh, friction pads that expand underneath that whole assembly, you get this spring. You can see all the grease on the spring. Wipe, wipe some of that off for you. This right here actually can be removed. It's just a little collar that goes around the uh, spring and prevents it from compressing too much. And this is a spring that can be replaced. Originally it was blue, as you can see. A lot of manufacturers that manufacture aftermarket parts for these, they use, you know, um, color coding. Like, you know, blue is middle of the line, you know, red is more, you know, a lot stiffer, yellow is way stiffer, you know. I'm, I'm just using those as examples. I'm not sure if they're the exact, um, you know, definition of the color code. But, um, but yeah, see, this, this was blue at the beginning. It's getting pretty worn out, but you have to have a, t a spring tension gauge to figure out whether or not it's still within tolerance. Um, I'd say you're safe for about 10, 15,000. Um, and again, a lot of this stuff is so like minor in the effects that it has on the scooter, you probably won't even notice it a lot of times. It's only really whenever you, um, you're getting into the racing aspect of scooters or drag racing or really performance tuning the bike that this is really going to come into play all of this stuff. Um, again, it comes from the factory like that for a reason. So, barrier weights, that's easy. You know, roller weights, change them out. Put some slider, put the Dr. Foley sliders in there. Awesome, you know, see how that does. As far as getting into the clutch, the clutch again responds to whatever the variator is doing. Um, so, you know, if you change your variator, the clutch is going to react to it. You're not going to have to change those springs <coughs> at the same time. If you're putting a cylinder kit, you're putting a performance exhaust, um, changing the variator out, then you don't want to be changing the clutch. Um, you don't want to have the clutch lagging behind from the rest of the parts you put on there. Um, but yeah, so this spring's next, uh, the next piece that comes out, again, that spring's responsible, thank you, for how tightly the pulleys grip the belt. Can you buy that whole clutch assembly? You can. Already built? Yep. When you buy it, when you, again, when you buy the clutch, uh, it comes with the assembly. Now, it does not include the bell. The clutch bell, you have to order separately. In most cases, just make sure you ask, you know, your manufacturer or your dealer, um, you know, whether or not it comes with the clutch bell. Try to get most of the grease off. Uh, <coughs> Ask them whether or not the bell is included. With the, the genuine, it isn't. So again, this is a separate piece that creates the clutch. Does a tighter uh, clutch spring mean uh, more belt wear? Um, it, yes and no. A tighter clutch spring will mean it's gripping the belt tighter, so there's less slippage, preventing a lot of that wear that happens. However, since it's gripping the belt tighter, it puts a lot more stress on the fibers of the belt when they're being pressed. So you'll get that ridge a lot quicker with more um, tension on the belt, but you won't get a lot of the slippage and wear, mm -hmm. uh, horizontal wear, you'll get a lot of vertical wear. You understand? Yeah. Uh, All right, cool, so this is the clutch right here. Again, it's tape. Uh, See, there's a lot of grease in here. Is this is what opens? Yeah. This is what opens and closes. Now, it doesn't just open and close. You spin it. It spins open. It spins close. Now, whenever you're at idle, this is closed. Whenever you're at idle, the variator is wide open. When you're at top speed, the variator is closed causing this to spin. See how that works? It'll spin and the hesitation causes it to open. And when you're at high speeds, the belt's at the bottom. 
so it works inversely according to the various um, <coughs> now again this is always spinning it's always applying pressure it's always opening and closing opening and closing if you put really 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 stiff springs in the uh, friction pads this could be wide open and spinning but there's friction pads at full RPM but the friction pads still aren't making contact with the clutch pedal. So that's where you get into the you know the tuning aspects. So a lot of times if you're drag racing you don't want it to open until almost full throttle, you know, so you tune it so it does that. But this part's always spinning. I'll pass this around. Now if you notice in here, this is where a lot of the lubrication points are. <coughs> Uh, came off of a customer's bike who's actually warranty to it out. Just replaced it so it's a little dirty still. But if you look on the inside, there's bearings on the inside. There's a, like a rod bearing on this side. And on this side is a regular old roller bearing with the shield. If you look in there, there's some grease in there. You want that because this, those bearings allow this piece here to spin freely. You don't, since this part's always spinning, you don't want it to have, uh, to be affected by this axle here. So they put a lot of that grease on the bearings and everything so that this can still spin freely. And no matter what the belt's doing, the tire can still spin freely as well. So those bearings are what's responsible for allowing that to happen. I'm sorry? You don't, again, you don't want to overpack it. Um, just a little dab with your finger on the, um, on these needle bearings. A little dab all the way around, you're good to go. Um, the inside bearing, it does have that cover, shield on the outside. It's packed from factory. It should, it should be good. Um, these so bearings... This is a warranty job that you replace the clutch? Yeah. Yeah, what, what had happened, um, I mean, what, basically what happened is this nut backed itself off. Um, that'll happen a lot of times if you try to do burnouts or wheelies or anything like that. Um, who's to say if that's what really happened? I mean, you know. Um, but this, um, the nut backed itself off while riding. So essentially, completely, you know. Um, Exactly. The spring opens up, defeats the purpose of the clutch. Essentially, then it turned the CVT into a one-gear transmission. You couldn't go over like 10 miles an hour, you know. Um, and basically, that's because it essentially, effectively, what happened when that nut came off, it welded these two pieces together. So the entire time the belt was spinning, the clutch, was, the wheel was trying to move. So. <clears throat> Anyways, but yeah. So I'll pass this around. Take a look at those bearings in there. Uh, very rarely do those bearings ever go bad. The only only way they would go bad is if you know you clean them out and don't put grease on them and put them back on. Well, it. Um, uh, right, yeah, well, again, when you're like cleaning your transmission components, use a little bit of like brake clean or anything like that. You want to stay away from carburetor cleaner because what carburetor cleaner does is it eats up all the rubber bits. Like carburetor cleaner <laughs> destroy all the rubber bits. So brake clean, you're a lot safer with the rubber parts. Just a little bit of brake cleaning in a cup, a little toothbrush, brush it all down. Um, in order to dry it off, wipe it down, or if you have a compressor, use some compressed air, blow it off, um, you know, anything like that. And again, just make sure everything looks good. If there's huge divots inside the, this pulley here, then something's definitely up. You know, that, that pulley there, it's um, made out of a much stronger metal than the variator. The variator the weight of the actual variator really affects the performance of the bike. So they try to make it as light as possible, use aluminum, things like that. That is made out of uh, more alloy, um, you know, components. It's a little stronger, uh, and also the clutch, you want it to be a little heavier to carry the energy. <clears throat> so when the nut came off of this one, why would you just tighten the nut back up? Uh, well, what happened was since it backed itself off and the nut was floating around in there, it damaged all of the threads and stuff. So, 
And in that case, it's one of those where you don't know why it backed off. Maybe it's a defective part, or maybe the customer is doing burnouts, or basically the part failed and needs to be replaced in that situation. And that's what that's what the warranty's for. So there must be some sort of helical gear in there or something. Maybe yeah, like the yeah, absolutely. Now, if you notice though, it is it sits on the bike like this, it spins this way. You'll notice when it spins that direction, you hold this flat, it opens. It's sort of like a slack here, you know, like the, the uh, spinning motion will cause it to open up. Okay, so does anyone have any questions? How long has CVT been around? CVT, man, CVT's been around for a while. Um, I believe a Japanese company, they made a scooter called the Fuji Rabbit. I believe, like the last year they're in production, they introduced an automatic model. Um, I do know in Europe they made uh, a Vespa Automatica in the early 80s, um, late 70s. It looked just like a vintage small frame, but it was an automatic CVT transmission. Before that, it was all gears. Before that, it was all gears. A lot, I mean, you know, up through the 60s, whenever it's people started dallying into it as far as the actual mode of you know, transferring the power from the crank to the rear wheel. Um, but it really didn't become popular until you know the boom in the 80s when you know, Honda came out with their whole line, and Yamaha came out with theirs. And, you know, even then in the 80s, it was more of a direct drive system where instead of having a variator on the front, like we have here, there was just a cush drop, just a cush gear. Essentially, a, a cush gear is a gear that's either cushioned mechanically with a spring or actual rubber bits to prevent slapping and harsh, you know, real jarring movements of it. So it would smooth it out with the cushion, essentially, you know, cush, hence cush gear, cushion gear. Um, so they would have that on the front and just allow the clutch to do all the variations clutch was it. So, and a lot of those were chain drive that were all bathed in oil. The side cases were just completely full. Man, I gotta go. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you, you very much. Have a good one. Thank you, y'all. Uh, so, now we're gonna put it back together. See if it works. You're out of here? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So when I screwed up, I was like two years old, I had a clutch to the adult. Yeah, so I have a belt check and all. Who would be, what would you recommend? Would you also recommend doing the uh, pads and the clutch? Uh, the pads and the clutch? No, probably not. No. Usually the way that it'll work is uh, here at our shop, for the 5,000 mile, we inspect all the components. The clutch pads, you can definitely tell that you know there's some wear on them, but as far as the tolerances go, pretty close to new, in as new condition. So uh, we inspect all of that just for any abnormalities or anything like that. However, most of the time they're good to go. You won't need to worry about all of that for a while. So you know that's just the great thing about CBT. That's why it's you know now being used in cars and everything. Um, you know, like I said at the beginning. This Civic Hybrid has a CVT transmission. It uses a belt, just like a scooter. Um, it's it's the reason why people are converting to that is, I'm not sure if any of you have had, oh, my transmission just went bad. Sweet, I gotta drop two grand on a used <laughs> transition. That's gonna blow up next month, you know? Um, whereas if, oh, my belt broke, replace the belt. That's it. You know, um, it's just, it really is very easy to maintain. <coughs> Just as anything mechanical with neglect, that's where you'll get a lot of your problems. Um, that is where things will just go horribly wrong for you. If, <laughs> you know, it's not quite set and forget. You know, you want to always keep in mind, oh, I've, I've ridden 5,000 miles. Maybe I should check into something, you know? Um, and it's, I can't stress enough, this kind of maintenance and just regular routine checking things, nuts and bolts, stuff like that, 
It's important on cars. In my opinion, tenfold more important on scooters, on motorcycles. Anything with two wheels, you got a 50-50 chance. All right, that's that's what I, if you know if one tire goes flat, you only got two of them. You know, you gotta you gotta fix it on the side of the road. So you want to make sure your tires are good. You want to make sure your nuts are nuts and bolts are put together. You don't want to be in traffic and have something go wrong due to neglect. Um, it's you know it, maintenance is definitely part of it, and that's very uh, it's an important part of it. So we try to we try to stress that here not only because. It's, Hey, we're a maintenance shop and we're a business, but also because it's just safety, you know? It's you're not in a huge steel cage with four wheels rolling down the road. You're out you're out there, you know, experiencing experiencing the country, you know, the best way possible. So yeah. Alright, any questions? Anyone? Anyone wanna come up and look at this up close? Anyone wanna see the are the, are the bells pretty much just stock or is that considered a Tunable part two. Uh, the bells you can. Um, they are considered a tunable part. Really, the only difference that would happen would be uh, the weight of the bell. The size, the shape, it all needs to be the same. The manufacturer specs. The difference that you could change is if you put a lighter, a uh, lighter um, bell. Essentially, lighter is better. You know, it's less weight. You have to pull the lug around. Um, but really. You, I would recommend just a stock bell. It's great. You can change everything else in the clutch. If you have that stock bell, uh, if you have a lighter bell, that means you're taking away material. Well, you might make more of a risk to add if you're going to use it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, you can see the difference, too. This is a 50cc. This is a 150cc. And on 500s, you know, they're not this big. They're you know, if it's six inches wide, they're huge. Um, the same goes for the variator. You know, the clutch is always a little bigger than the variator, but uh, they're coming out with a whole lot more uh, advancements with performance tuning. Uh, there's one company for the larger bikes. I think that the new uh, 300cc that Piaggio just came out with, came out with in America, um, actually, instead of having the roller weights, there's actually little cylindrical tubes that extend out and extend back in. They kind of look like uh, sea urchins or something, you know? They like pop out and come back in, and that's what provides the, the movement of that rear pulley as opposed to the roller weights. They uh, and instead of having six, there's, you know, 16 of them all the way around. Just a smoother action, so that's Do exciting. Do those wear less? Than rollers? Uh, those actually, um, it's about the same. The, the difference with those is the rollers kind of, they have the entire circular surface to transfer all the wear onto. With those, literally, it's just like, it's shaped like a finger and it sticks out and rubs right on the tip of the finger. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. And it's always rubbing the tip, so yeah. you know, it'll wear down. I think you replace them a little more. Do they get shorter and then they weigh less? You get shorter, they'll weigh less, and also you won't get the full extension. No. So. Cool. Yeah. So, any questions at all? Anyone need a donut or some coffee or bathroom break? Or I'm sorry. Quick break. Oh, quick break. Yeah, we can do that. Let's take a let's take a seven minute break. <laughs> I didn't even get a break. There you go. <laughs> Let's see, is everyone everyone here that needs to be? Uh, I don't think so. There's a couple more in there. You want to get one? Uh, I'll just sure. Sure. It'll be pretty boring until we start it up, anyway, so. Uh, I recommend one of these, everyone, too. <coughs> Magnetic <Okay>. bolt tray. <laughs> yeah. Good.
Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Uh, oh, this is good. Yeah, it's interesting. How, I don't know why I'm having a particularly hard time today coming up with words. I don't know. I guess it was a late night or something. <laughs> Crankshaft for now, just to make sure it's all neat and tidy and out of the way. Next, make sure the threads are all clean, everything's good to go, nothing's all munched up um, on this part here. This, again, it has the splines on the center. We're going to make sure they're lined up. You don't want to smash them, munch them up. Um, Pretty much every scooter I've seen has splines. Same place as these places have splines. So just keep an eye out for this. Um, fit this onto this rear final drive shaft. Make sure it's lined up. Seeing the wheel spin, it's good. You want to see that. So everything's looking good, looking smooth. Here's your washer. your nut. You want to thread the nut all the way down before you start tightening it. Snug it with your fingers, especially if you're going to attempt to use the fateful impact, rent, uh, impact gun. Make sure it's snug down all the way before you use it. Um, it's particularly more important on the variator, and I'll tell you why when we get there. So now, if you had the correct holding tool, you would use it there. You would uh, pull out your torque wrench. I recommend the click type. Uh, a couple different different types. This here is a click type torque wrench. Basically, what happens when you reach the torque setting, the whole head clicks. When you hear that click, you're done. The way you set it is down here. This one has foot pounds and newton meters on it. A lot of European bikes do like new meters. Um, the torque settings for both the variator nut and the um, clutch nut is right around 43 foot pounds max. Anywhere from 37 to 43. Um, always want to shoot for the higher tolerances. Um, but again, if you did 40 foot pounds, you're totally fine. Uh, 
another type of torque wrench they will make. Some of you might be more familiar with this type. Beam type. Um, the important thing with any torque wrench is you don't want to use extensions with them. Um, a lot of torque wrenches come with, I mean extensions for the socket, you know what I mean? A lot of torque wrenches do come with um, a manual saying like if you use a 6 inch extension, increase your torque value by X amount. Um, it's basically if you use oh, an extension, it lessens the actual torque value being read. This one works pretty great. It's it's been the standard for you know since the time was since they invented the wheel, I guess. No, but uh, <laughs> but I would definitely recommend the click type. It's a little more precise, less margin for error. Um, again, the click type is a little more expensive, so it's really how often you're going to be doing all of this. <clears throat> Me, however, I'm a professional, so. <clears throat> I will use the impact gun. <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> 42 pounds? Yeah, yeah. I was 42.7, <laughs> actually. Uh, um, cool, so now that's it. Clutch is on. Clutch is good to go. You made sure that the main uh, clutch assembly nut was still tight. Um, which is the nut right behind here, which we talked about earlier. Um, make sure there's grease on those bearings on the inside of the uh, clutch assembly. Clutch bells on the splines. Nothing's got nothing got munched. Nothing's good. 43 foot pounds on this particular model. Um, that being done, you're ready to put the variator back together. I presume is the belt on there? Belt is on. Oh. Yes. The belt was the first step. We had to put that. No, no worries. Yeah. Uh, Sketching yet? No worries. Uh, the belt, you want to try to put it on there first. Um, a lot of models, different makes and models, they don't allow enough clearance between the case and the actual outer and inner pulley to get the belt in there. So you want to put it on there. A lot of times you can just wrap it around and that works, but in most cases you need to actually open up the pulley, slide the um, belt further into it in order to get it on the bike, which is what we've done here. Um, so now that this is all good to go, we're going to put the variator on. Take the belt off the crank, and you can just spin it down, <coughs> just like that. Um, or you can spin it up, or just you know anywhere out of the way. So we'll get the variator. If I could have a volunteer to come put this together for me, anyone? Anyone? Come on up. Make sure that roller is in there. There you go. <laughs> These go in here. Yep. Now the slider, do you recommend putting one on here? They actually need to go onto this backing plate first. Oh, okay. Um, now if you look at the actual shape of the slider, we didn't go into detail very much about this, but if you look at it, one side is angled on the edge and the other side is square edges. If you look here, it's square, and on this side, you need that angle in order to slide right there. Yep, that's exactly it. And they aren't gonna, a lot of times they won't fit on there snug. Like you don't want to press it in there it's not, gonna, then, it's not gonna snap in there. Right, absolutely. And if you do have to force it in there, what'll happen is you'll pinch this closed, uh, preventing okay. it from sliding it's freely fine. here. Absolutely. Now, you don't have to clean the top or anything? Or? You can. You can you, I'll, we're just throwing it back together. Um, definitely recommend <coughs> cleaning it up. Get it like an old toothbrush and some brake clean. Wipe all the, the black stuff from your belt, so you want to replace it. On this bike, if, you, if your belt broke, is there enough room to put a new one on without pulling off the clutch? Absolutely not. You'll, um, most of the time, again, just because of the clearance issue with the side of the transmission case housing, and 
the outer and inner pulleys of the clutch, it's not wide enough for a belt to slide in. Um, so a lot of times, you, you will have to take the outer variator pulley off and the clutch assembly off. You can change the belt, no problem, leaving this in there. Now if you pull, if, again, if you pull your outer pulley off and your belt comes out and then this pops out and all your rollers fall out, it's totally fine. You just got to pull it off and put them in exactly like, what your name is? Tom. 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 Um, just like Tom did, just there. Um, double checking. Yeah, perfect. Um, just put them all back together in a little project to extend the time of service. Um, so that's perfect right there. In, in order to put this back on, what you're going to want to do is put the spacer, which is also the dowel right here. You're going to want to slide this in first. Now if you look at it on this particular one, you can usually see where the surface has been that it's sliding. You can see here it's nowhere from here to the top. That's usually because that is the space where um, the barrier is fully open and it's not sliding on that surface at all. From here back you can see some wear, some scuff marks. You want to look for this too. If there's a lot of rust in here, it's not good. You don't want any rust. You don't want any big grooves. You don't want any gouges. You don't want anything like that. Conversely, on the inside of your inner variator pulley, on this inner ridge, make sure it's smooth. Make sure it's good to go. When you slide this in, be careful not to push it too far because then you'll push your backing plate out and your rollers will all fall out. So keep your thumb on the backing plate, keep your fingers on the front, pressing it together. Slide this in here, and it's a pretty <coughs> tight fit. Make sure it's smooth, make sure it's it's not you know, knocking around and clanking and rattling or anything like that, but it's in there smoothly, just like that. And that's what you want, you can, that's, that's no, what you want. No need for graphite or anything, just nope. clean services? Just clean <coughs> services. Um, the actual, um, the metal here, is it, they actually put, um, I, believe, I believe it's titanium, and it's, you know, very smooth, and, it's, and the same thing in here, there's a titanium collar and aluminum um, variator. Don't quote me on titanium, everybody. <laughs> titanium, no. Um, on those small screws, <laughs> where they, where they restrict the, the variator, is that where they do it on that sleeve? Yes. Right here, what what they do is actually they put a ring around this sleeve, which prevents the variator from closing all the way. <clears throat> now they do that along with exhaust restrictors as well. Um, so if you, you have to you know remove both of them in order to de-restrict the scooter essentially. Um, but yeah, basically it's just they have a little ring on the inside so here like, around this like dowel. Like clip maybe? No, just literally just. Just Wait. floats around. Yeah, I mean, just a you know little uh, alloy ring. That's it. You pull that out, put it back together just as normal, um, and then your transmission has been de-restricted. Now, a lot of other manufacturers also restrict the airbox, the airflow into the scooter as well. So you have to, you know, there's some good people on the website showing you how to do certain things to different models, um, but you can consult your uh, dealership. Same time, it's kind of like, well, in Virginia, it's a weird gray area, whether or not we can tell you how to do that or not. So, I'll, I'll let them deal with that up there. Anyways, um, so yeah, make sure this is in there. Make sure you're keeping all of this snug so it's not bouncing around or anything and you don't lose any of those roller weights. Um, this goes right onto the crankshaft. No lube, don't do anything like that. You're totally fine. Um, the actual force when it's bolted together will hold it in place on the crankshaft. Um, some models do have a spacer that goes on the back of the crankshaft. It shouldn't come off, but for whatever reason, just make sure, look in your underpin, make sure there's no spacer or anything like that behind your barrier. Because if you were to put it on without that spacer there, it's going to change everything. Um, 
not have the space. The space was actually built in to this bike, so it didn't come out. Good to go. Basically slide it on there, keeping <coughs> everything tight, straight back. Everything's on there tight and smooth. Done with that, that's on there, you're good to go. Um, the next trickier part is going to be your outer variator pulley. Now the reason why this one is trickier is because of the splines. You need to remember that this outer pulley has splines on it, as well as your kickstart gear has splines on it as well. There's the perfect, the engineers did a great thing, there's the perfect amount of splines, the width of this pulley and this gear. It makes it tricky because you can line up these splines. You need to make sure that this is on the splines before you tighten it down. Alright, it's on the splines, it's all the way down there. Then you put the washer and the nut on. And again, tighten the nut all the way down, snug it with your fingers, making sure this is on the splines. Because if it's not on the splines, if it's off, cock to the side, crank down on it. You'll mash those splines up or you're going to get useless. You won't be able to get your variator back off without using the puller tool. And the thing that you munch is your crankshaft. You don't want to do, you don't want to hit your crankshaft, you don't want to sneeze on your crankshaft, you don't even want to, you know, tap it with a Q-tip too hard. It, you need to treat that like a little, like a baby. So just make sure that's all on the splines before you tighten it down or anything. That's that's the only tricky part about it. The reason why it makes it a little trickier is because when you have the belt in there, it makes it wider. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure a lot of times to go in here, open the clutch, push the belt all the way to the bottom. If you can, if you can see from the side, clutch is all the way open, the belt is all the way on the bottom and the clutch is close. Mm. That way, this the front of the belt gives me enough clearance mm. to get it on there. I've messed that up one time. Yeah. It's <laughs> I mean it's it's tricky. It's uh you know it's definitely something that you don't want to learn the hard way. It's a little expensive. So Expensive lesson to learn. How about that? Make seventy bucks an hour for each <laughs> <laughs> um, So yeah, so the belt's on there. It is good to go. Um, anyone want to come assist me? Anyone else? You had your turn. I did. <laughs> anyone else want to come on up? And, yeah, come on. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna get you to put the uh, var this variator pulley on there. Just, just ignore that. <laughs> So it's on the splines, everything's good to go? Yeah. Um, now make sure that the belt isn't preventing it from being fully seated. If you just touch the belt, if it bounces around like that, then you're good. Okay. Um, now keep pushing down on this. Now put the kickstart gear on there. Make sure the splines line up. At what model or size do they stop making the kickstart? Um, usually 200 cc's is about the limit. Um, 150's that's about it. The HD 200, the SYM does not have a kickstart. Um, neither does the RV. Um, so yeah, make sure that wash is on there. Again, keep that pushed down and thread it all the way down with your fingers. See, that's, that's why it's tricky because I don't know anyone with fingers small enough to do this. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Plus, I just had eye surgery, so this doesn't do real well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. Did you need, you need a flashlight or maybe? Well, you're out of luck. I don't know where my flashlight is. <laughs> All right, snug down. Double check. See, they even have a space behind it, so you don't think it's all, but you're good. You're good. You did a good job. Thank you very much. Give them a time bomb. <laughs>
Um, so yeah, there you go. The variator's on there. Snug that, that nut down. Definitely want to torque it before you take off. That nut will fly off of there very easily if it's not torqued at all. Do you use any Loctite or anything? Loctite don't want to use, actually. Um, you don't want to use Loctite or anything like that on your crankshaft. Um, because the Loctite will lock it on there and you'll have to use more force than the wheel factory will, you know, it specifies to get it back off. And it could twist, it could torque, it could, it could damage the crank. You don't want to do that at all. Um, also, the um, the crankshaft is hardened metal, and uh, the threads on the crankshaft are, they need well, to stay it's clean. This way it's anyway, so it's enough. Well, in theory. In theory. Uh, pretty much, it's, it doesn't make much of a difference because the whenever you hit the gas, it will tighten, but as you slow down, it will loosen. Can you strip the splines on that crankshaft because isn't that variator aluminum? Um, the actual, the only thing, you'll strip the variator before you'll strip the crankshaft. That's um, something that they thought about, the engineers thought about all that stuff. There used to be older bikes where um, you used to strip the crankshaft out all the time. Like you, you know, the, the actual nut to tighten it was a harder metal than the crankshaft is made out of, and you pull the threads off the crankshaft almost every time you tighten it, you know. And needless to say, it did not yeah. do very well in the market, but, uh, and that was like, I think it was only a couple scooters in the 40s, like mm. 1948. They did it a couple of times, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, so I'm going to use my uh, fancy torque wrench. We're going to get this 43 foot-pounds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Forty-three point six. I went a little bit over that time. <laughs> Better safe than sorry. Um, yeah, so we got everything hooked up. Everything's good to go. Um, a lot of people have asked me, like, well, don't you want to get rid of this belt slack before you start up the bike or anything? You can. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, but you know, the bike will definitely get rid of that for you. But in order to get rid of it, you just stick your finger in the clutch and let it slam your finger shit. <laughs> just spin it around a couple of times. Get the belt settled back into place. That's it. So does anybody have any questions at all? Any questions? Cool. Alright, we're going to start it up. I'm going to need to get behind you once more just to get the exhaust. I don't want anyone to suffocate in here today. Here would be good. Usually, there's like the. I did. 
exhausted <laughs> shield here. <laughs> like, Thanks for uh, volunteering. <laughs> Zach, can you flip that switch right about the rags for me? Cool. Alright, let me make sure everything's out of the way of the fire that we'll be shooting out of the bag. The sparks that fly off the clutch and we put it backwards. It does get hot. If you survive if you survive this, Chelsea has a free gift for you in Yeah, yeah. If you survive, you pass the course. Yeah. And so do we. <laughs> Alright, let's see. I want to stand on this side over here. Are those safety glasses? They actually They're not safety glasses. So. Uh, this in the 50s is, is this piece right here. Um, since the 150s and the 125s take a lot more force to crank the engine over. And again, excuse me, you don't want to use this very often. It's only emergency situations that you want to be kickstarting your bike. Um, the reason for it is because of the amount of force it takes. Um, it's really more just a feature to get you home than something to be used commonly. And it's, if you've ever tried to use it on the 150 or the 125, it's tight. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> you know, I mean, it really is. It's it's tough. It's not. You're like, man, am I breaking it? Oh, it worked. You know, it's definitely tough. But um, 
What you want to do is you want to make sure that there's a little bit of a little dab, tiny little dab of grease right around here. Because um, this part actually seats into this hole right back in the actual engine cases. Um, another thing you want to look out for is this gear right here. This is the kickstart actuator gear. This can pop out. Uh, remember how we were using the kickstart to get the cover off? This can actually come out. I mean, a lot of times, um, you'll see it'll just pop right out of there. So it looks like, you know, cool little gears all over the place. Um, it's recommended, I'd recommend to take this out and clean it off. You know, use a toothbrush and a little bit of brake clean. Clean it off, clean it off in here. Put another little dab of grease right on the inside, right on this here. Um, don't want to go overkill, of course, because then the grease could get onto your other components and burn and all that kind of stuff. So, um, If this does pop out, you're going to want to, particularly on the 50 cc's, your lever will probably be up higher than it should be, kickstart lever, so you want to pull it down to right around where it's supposed to be. Put this gear on, make sure the stop is lined up in the middle there, line up the teeth of the gear, and then release the uh, lever, <coughs> the kickstart lever, and kind of wiggle it down onto there, just like that. Pops on, make sure it's all the way down before you try to put the side cover on. Um, and other than that, basically put it on there as long as that gear is good to go. Line it all up, there are some um, alignment <coughs> dowels uh, on this side cover, sometimes they come out on the side cover, some, sometimes they stay on the inside of the cases. Here you can see one here, and you can see one here as well. Um, these are really helpful for lining up your gaskets. If um, you do want to replace the gasket, you should probably re replace the gasket on this because it's so, you know, worn out, but Frankenbite, you know. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, so you can put the gaskets around these alignment dowels, good to go. You want to make sure that those line up with the case too. You don't want to munch those. You don't want to. If you do notice that one of them is folded in half or cranked, creased or anything like that, you want to just remove it completely. Um, you know, if you can, easy, if you know, finding replacements are easily accessible for you, then great, do that. If not, just be a little more careful when you line up the bolt holes. First thing that's going to go is this piece. We're going to insert it into the uh, uh, hole in the case. Just like that. Make sure the alignment dowel is lined up. And then this is the same rod that goes all the way into that slot on the inside. So just give it a little bit of a couple of taps. Your palm. Make sure it's pretty snugly on there. Give it a couple of whaps with the rubber rubber mallet. You know, that's easier than beating on it with your hands. Um, once you make sure everything's lined up, just make sure your gasket's not sticking out anywhere around here that could potentially cause it to get chewed up by the belt. Um, and then basically put the nuts back in, the bolts back in. I'll do the tricky part first, this guy right here. This is a little bit trickier because if you look on the case, there's one, two, three places where it looks like bolts will be. You only use this first one and the second one. There's actually nothing that goes in here because it gets covered up by this. You see. Just like that. We use one bolt in the front. And all those bolts are the same length, it doesn't matter. Yes, on the buddies, they're the same length. A lot of manufacturers have different lengths. If you ever get the pleasure to, I'll say that tongue in cheek, of um, opening up a Piaggio, like a Piaggio Vespas or the MP3500s or anything of that nature, uh, taking their side covers off, it's completely different than the buddy. It looks like an alien version. The components are the same, but the clutch bolt is on the outside of the cases and you have to take a plastic, sometimes it's a chrome cover off and then remove that bolt in order to get the cases off. Same with the variator, it's, it's very strange. 
how they, the way that they came up with it. Hi. 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 Oh, you've been sold. All right. Um, so, it's definitely, you want to you wanna take a look at your owner's manual before you take any of this stuff apart. If you have a buddy, that's what you do. You know, if you got an, 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 the RV250, it has a lot of plastic body panels as well that are um, decorative, essentially, you know. Uh, you got to take get all those off before you even get to the case uh, cover. Um, you won't have the kickstart to deal with at all. Um, however, there might be bearings in your outer case. Um, it just you know, it just definitely take a look in the in the, um, the service shop manual. Oh, don't look that. Look at that. You're eating grease. Oh. I guess so. Uh, um, Man, come here. <laughs> but yeah, so um, that's about it. Just take a look at the service shop manual. The owner's manual that tells you when to change the oil, but it won't tell you how to. You know, the service shop manual, this is, um, I had this. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Had the buddy shop manual. It's totally in um, broken English. If you read the preface, uh, yeah. if you can tell me what the preface means, good, good, good deal, because I don't know what. So, you know. Just for a laugh. Just the preface. Go ahead and read that. Alright. This manual offers all service specialists with the technological procedures of maintenance repairing for PA-125 detailed, detailedly <laughs> show those who may concern how to maintain, repair, change parts, troubleshoot, and reassemble, etc. At every important section, we illustrate by assembly explosion diagrams and photographs. If necessary, please check the diagrams already shown. Uh, though we have tried our best, please kindly instruct us any faults found in this manual. <laughs> so, that first paragraph is a doozy. Yeah? Uh, no, but it's, it's, it, it's always just a funny running joke. Um, yeah, other than that, anybody, uh, I'm done guys. You guys can put the bolts back in the side cover, man. Have at it, guys. Right. Like it, right. If you have any other questions at all, like give us a call anytime. Uh, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you out. Uh, and also, we're here to do all this for you. So, okay. 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 Okay.